Welcome back to another edition of the Walker Valley Football Coaches Show with Walker Valley Head Football Coach Drew Akins. I'm Andy Morris, along with my good friend Jacob Mason. As usual, we're sponsored all season long by Wholesale Supply Group. Coach Akins, good to see you. It's week 11, Howard week, uh, last region game, last regular season game of the season. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a weird year, man. Uh, it's been an up and down year for sure and something that uh, obviously, you know, we've, we've not ended exactly how we want to, but honestly, I, I, I told our team today, I really like where we are. I know that sounds weird coming off, you know, four losses, and, but if you look, watch how we played the other night, uh, really just really proud of how our team played. Uh, we played really hard, really hard. I thought we laid it on the line, you know, pretty much all over the field. I, I don't think we executed great in the second half, and that kind of cost us. Uh, we didn't play with great technique in the second half. But watching our effort and knowing, you know, what happened on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, that our week carried over to the first, you know, the first half. And, and as a coach, you see that. As a coach, you see, hey, man, y'all worked your tail off on Tuesday and Wednesday, and it showed up. It showed up for a half, but it showed up. Uh, so we can continue to work like that and, and work towards – uh, that kind of effort all the time, you know, if it shows up through the whole game, you really see an opportunity to go on a real run here. I like where we are mentally. Uh, I think our kids really understand finally what we're trying to get done, and you see the execution getting better. You saw it especially in the first half the other night. I thought we really executed well. Having Eli back defensively uh, really gave us a spark in the first half. And I think we just kind of gassed out. Uh, you know, and, and didn't play with great mental technique, and, and that cost us. And, you know, we had a poorly timed three and out there in the second half that kind of uh, put our defense right back on the field, and that's not necessarily fair to our defense, especially after the nine-minute drive they opened up with. So uh, we definitely saw some positives the other night. Uh, I thought it was the best half, we, half of football we've played since Carter. And I think we can build on that, and I really expect us to do that. I absolutely agree. That that first half, uh, of course, Coach Akins is talking about last week's game uh, in Baxter, Tennessee, at Upperman High School. The final was 28-14 to Upperman. Uh, first half completely dominated by the Mustangs, 14-0 at halftime. And as you said, Upperman came out and played a tough game second half. And, and they were a really good team. Let, let's let's just talk about that. They were a great yeah. football team. They're, they've moved on to 8-1 and one and mm -hmm. have a great coaching staff, but they had some dudes. I mean, they really yeah. did. Yeah, they absolutely have some dudes. Listen, I think, you know, I think you could see upper men in the semifinals of 4A. Mm -hmm. uh, when you talk about the teams that we've played over the, the last four weeks that we've lost to, <coughs> excuse me, um, you know, we've played some really good football teams. You know, I, I, a Ray really, County team who just had a big one over Bradley. Yeah, won the region. Yeah. You know, McMahon County's playing much better as the season's going on. Uh, early in the season, they were kind of searching for themselves, but they've kind of found their own. Uh, obviously, we caught Cleveland at a really bad time yeah. where they're all healthy, uh, and they were able to really play a great game. They kind of all came together against us. And then this Upperman team, I'm telling you, I, I really believe, I know you're going to see them in the quarterfinals. Uh, I'll be really interested to see if they don't make it to the semifinals. I think them and Red Bank will meet up in the quarters, and that'll be a great football game against two really good teams. But, we, you know, we, we really punched that team in the mouth for a half uh, and just weren't able to sustain that. But, yeah, let's not gloss over the fact that that was a really good football team that we played. In a very rowdy atmosphere <laughs> as well. It was a super cool atmosphere. I know we talked about that off air, but outstanding atmosphere. They always do a good job. And, and like you said, Coach Kane is a – a great football coach, and he's going to have his team ready to play. And they came out in the second half, and they didn't change much of anything, especially scheme-wise. They just ran power and counter and did it really well. Uh, and we didn't fit it great in the second half, and then we had the three and out. Uh, they gave him the ball right back after that nine-minute drive that they went down and scored. I uh, wish we could have found a way to get a stop on that fourth down. You know, there's two fourth down on that drives. And um, one of them, he had the punt team ready, you know, talking to Kane after. Like I said, we're close. He and I spoke, you know, and our staff has spoke with him since. And they had their punt team ready. Uh, and he, he decided to go for it and knew that if he didn't get that first down, that the game was probably going to be over. Uh, and they got it, and it, it turned into a 16-play drive. Completely and then, changed the moment. Yeah, then we go three and out, and they get the ball right back, and they score first play of the fourth quarter. Uh, and we just weren't able to sustain anything in the second half. And 
Uh, you know, it's, it, it comes a little bit from technique. It comes a little bit from execution. And, and I think if we can cure those things up and practice over the next, you know, few weeks, then I, I feel like we got a chance to do some special things in the playoffs. So real quick, going to go over some individual stats here. Uh, I want to start defensively. Jacob, you jump in on this whenever you'd like. Uh, Judah Green, big night, 12 tackles for him. Uh, Brady Montgomery, 12 tackles. And, of course, Eli Denton back playing defense for you, a huge piece of your defense, mm -hmm. also had 12 tackles and probably not one of his uh, – most uh, high tempo games per se. Yeah, I mean, when you miss four weeks, you know, you fall out of football shape pretty quickly. Uh, but I'll tell you what, one of the plays we're going to watch here is his uh, stop right before hat, or right uh, at the end of the first quarter. Uh, I want to show that that film and just how cool that that play was. Uh, you'll be able to see it when we get there. It, it's a really cool play for Eli. And, uh, he made a big time stop on that fourth down, but I thought defensively we played really well. And you know, in the first half, we had two big stops in on their side of the field. Uh, I thought we played fast, and like I said, in the second half, they just did a good job of finding where they could run power and counter, and and did a good job of, you know, digging our our uh, overhangs out, and we we didn't fit it great inside. And you know, that's what they do when they, when you run power counter the way they do. Uh, if you don't fit it right, they're gonna. You know, it wasn't chunk plays. It was five yards here, six yards there, uh, you know, eight yards here, three yards there. It, it was just, they just did a good job of sustaining that drive. And it's one of those things that's really hard for a high school team to do. You know, I think we've talked about it a lot here is, you know, it's hard to sustain a 16 play drive and be disciplined enough to do that. Uh, so we just kept saying on that drive, hey, just keep, keep getting them on the ground, keep getting on the ground, and, and kudos to them for being able to finish that drive and continue to be disciplined enough to do what they're supposed to do for the entire 16 plays. One thing that uh, really excited me, I told Jacob this during the pregame when I was looking at the, the starting lineups, the secondary, the athletes you had on the field, and I think especially in that first half, that they took away the deep threat mm -hmm. that, that we talked about how Upperman would like to kind of run, 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 then pop one over the top. Secondary, the athletes you had on the field, uh, having Geo Angeles and Braxton starting at the corners, moving Brady Montgomery to the nickel, uh, Day Day at free safety and Spencer at the dime. Uh, we, I was excited seeing those guys all on the field together at the same time. Yeah, it's a really athletic back end. You know, it was cool to see those guys make plays. You know, Geo was able to undercut the slant. Uh, there early in the first half. Well, maybe that was late. I think it was late in the first half. He undercut that slant and got an interception. Uh, but yeah, that was at a really athletic back end and, and really made some plays. Even the touchdown that they had, uh, Gio was in great position. Yeah. The kid just made a good play. You know, you gotta, you gotta give credit. It's not always, hey, we just we gave that one away. No, their their team has great players too. And number four, you know, when you watch the film, Geo's hands were right in between yeah, he his went hands. Up with it. He went up right in between them, uh, and the kid did a great job of grabbing it, pulling it up out of the out of Geo's away from Geo's hand. Uh, the kid made a great play. Yeah. But Geo was in great position uh, and did exactly what we coached him to do. And the kid just made a play. And uh, those things are going to happen. We just got to keep playing. Yeah, you know, keep playing because at that point I think it was 14 to 14. So it's not like that ended the game. It was just uh, a great play by that kid. So kudos to them. Uh, they came and made plays in the second half, uh, and we, we weren't able to execute as well as we did in the first half, and it cost us. Another player that I thought had a great game was Brady Montgomery. I, I call him the sniper. <laughs> he will do that. <laughs> Dude, he, he, he comes out firing, and he, he tackles low, but he's kind of become a sure tackler on that defense. And, and when, it, when it does get to the second level and past the linebackers, normally it doesn't get very far because yeah. Brady's right there. Yeah, I, I think we've done a great job of knowing what Brady's able to do, uh, and Brady does a great job of doing what he's coached to do. Uh, I think that's what you see from, from a lot of our guys defensively the last few weeks. Uh, as we've started playing better defensively, you see that guys are doing what they're coached to do, and Brady's one that has always done that. You know, we moved him to nickel uh, this week because we, we weren't sure that Eli was going to be able to play. Uh, so we started out with, with him at that nickel position, but then quickly moved him back to free safety. He just does such a great, great job of reading run and coming and filling the alley. We ask our safeties to do a lot. Uh, so asking him to fill that alley uh, was a big time thing for us, and he did a great job of that throughout the night. But he's done that all year, you know, and, and he's done a great job. Again, you know, we got him on the ground. You know, it's 16 play drive, is, is, that means we tackled them. 
Uh, and, and Coach Kane actually said after the game, he said, we haven't had anybody tackle us like that. You know, most of the time it's been, you know, three yards here, five yards here, 70-yard touchdown. Uh, we didn't allow the big play. We actually won explosive plays the other night. I think they had four and we had six. So we won explosive plays the other night. Uh, but they did a great job of just consistently doing the right thing and executing. Uh, and that was the difference in the game. They executed a little better offensively than we did. Uh, and it led to, you know, a few more touchdowns in the second half. So, um, but what? yeah, let, let, me show you, let me show you some film. Let, let's go through this. I want to start uh, with Eli. I want to show you all just to start out this fourth down stop uh, because it's a really big time play. You know, I think they had driven it down. Again, it was a long drive. Uh, and it was something where they drove down and were able to get inside our five. Uh, I think they ran, I think they started that drive, uh, that series, uh, first and 10, first and goal from the 10. Um, I'll tell you what was one of the coolest things, and I've, I actually texted Johnny Mole and just said, hey, this is a game changer. Um, but but the, the LED lights are really cool. Yeah. And that's something I know our county's mentioned uh, as a possibility, and that's something that, uh, you know, I hope we make a push for, because that really changes some of the things you can do with setting the lights to the music and making it a really cool atmosphere. I thought they did a really good job. Uh, their sound system was awesome. Their lights were cool. I think that's something that we, you know, we'll really investigate to try to bring that same atmosphere, because right? like you said, it does. You know, you go to these college stadiums and you see all these light shows, and it, it's a really cool atmosphere, and I, I would love to bring that to our fans. So, well, I, I think I can tell you real quick, though, where Jacob and I calling the game on Sports 99.1 in the, the home press box, we had a great view of our visiting bleachers where, coincidentally, the fireworks would go off mm -hmm. right behind our parents and fans and band, and I don't think they were expecting that first round, <laughs> and it was very low, so it caught all of us off guard, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think that's something cool that we do at, at times. We do it behind the, the, the field house yeah. is where we can shoot those off. So, anyways, I think we got the film ready to go, so we're going to go in here. I'm going to show you this first play uh, from our end zone shot. going okay so uh, I can't show you but I will tell you this it's a great play uh, Eli Dent was able to shoot in straight through uh, B gap made a stop on the quarterback right in the quarterback's face it was such a cool play and really it, it really energized us for that first half and kind of led to a lot of stuff that happened in the first half you know one thing that I had in here that I wanted to was going to show you but I'll just talk you through it uh, was our quarterback draw. I think when you watched our game the other night, I think we ran eight quarterback draws, uh, called quarterback draws. Uh, Jackson McGowan did a great job of climbing all night up to their mic, uh, and our running back actually led it as well, and you saw us gain, I think we gained uh, 80 total yards, 88 yards on quarterback draw alone. So really cool, uh, you know, that was a scheme thing we talked about through the week. Uh, that we needed to implement because they do a great job at dropping underneath uh, with their outside backers and able to take, you know, that scheme that they do and, and use that against them. So I thought we did a good job of that. But listen, offensively, we, we, when you look at the first half especially, you know, Aiden Gibson had several catches, Kay Charta with the hitch and go. Uh, I know that y'all made that your play of the game. And I got to tell this story, and then, uh, you know, I, we can probably move on from Upperman. But uh, right before that, we had thrown a 10-yard stop route to Cole Harbison. Uh, it was right on our sideline, and it was great timing. Cole made a great, uh, ran a great route. Ryan made a great throw. Uh, we caught it, stepped out of bounds. And Cole came to me. I think we, we ran a, another quarterback draw right after that. I think we gained like eight, uh, eight to nine yards. So it was second and one. Uh, and I believe that they called a timeout. Or no, I called a timeout because it was, it was running down in the half. I think there was like a minute 30 left. Uh, and Cole came to me during the timeout and he said, Coach, I don't care who does it, but we can run hitch and go and it's going to be a touchdown. And I was like, hey, can I run it with Cade? He's done it more than you have. He said, Coach, I don't care who does it, but I'm telling you it's going to score. Uh, and, and I called it right out of the, the break, uh, right out of the timeout. Uh, Cade ran an unbelievable route. I wish I could show it to you, but ran an unbelievable route with incredible patience, made that corner jump up and spun out of it and was wide open. And you can see on the film, Cole is on the other side of the field watching, 
and right when we catch it, he runs over to the sideline and celebrates. And what a cool thing for a kid to do. And for Future say, offensive coordinator, Dude, maybe. I'm telling you, man, like you, can, you may be on the coaching staff, give you a headset, but man, what a, what a cool thing for a kid to be able to say, Coach, I don't care who does it. I don't care who gets the glory here. I'm telling you, this play's gonna work. And for me to say, hey, can I, can I get Cade to do it? Because Cade's done this. He's, he's been in that moment. He's ran that route, you know, probably 100 times over his career. Can he do it because he's more experienced at it? And for him to respond with, I don't care who does it, Coach. It uh, shows how selfless Cole is. And, and, you know, I just I thought we played a great game. we got to do some things execution-wise at receiver better. But I thought those guys really played a great game, and, and we're going to rely on them over the next few weeks to – try to get back on track. I really see, you know, some some really bright spots with our offense. So. And before we take our first commercial break, real quick, going to throw out a couple stats here. Those quarterback draws you were talking about, Ryan Lay averaged close to four yards per carry mm-hmm. uh, due yeah, to those. And that was, that's without sack, I and mean, that's sack yardage yes. added in. So, yeah. you, like I said, I think we ran, I think we ran it eight times and had 88 yards. Uh, so that tells you, you know, well, average 11 per per quarterback draw, which and is awesome. And we, we overheard the – I overheard the radio for Upperman talking, and the, all night they talked about you have to respect the wide receivers. You have to respect mm-hmm. the wide receivers, and that's what those DBs were doing, falling back with them, yeah. and it left a running lane open, and you, you blocked it really well. So it was yeah. a great scheme. I, I think it worked out all night long as well. Cole Harbison has that point guard mentality. Yeah. Doesn't get scored. Love that kid. Worked in my classroom. But what a cool moment. That's, yeah, thank thank you for sharing that story. It was, it was sure. really cool, man, and, and really what we need to get to. You know, I, I think great teams, great teams don't care who gets the glory. Mm-hmm. Great teams don't care who's the star. They just want to go score a touchdown. They just want to go win. Uh, and that was a great uh, example of that from, from our team uh, and from a kid that, uh, you know, I know loves his teammates and wants us to be successful as a team. So really cool moment. Hopefully, you know, starting this week, we can start putting both halves together and, and really uh, enter the playoffs with some momentum after a win this week. And those receivers they're talking about, Cade Charta had a touchdown, and Aiden Gibson accounted for the other Mustang touchdown. So, uh, uh, again, they were two of the, it looks like, five guys at the receiver position to, to have a catch in the game. So, mm-hmm. again, uh, compliments to Ryan Lay for spreading the ball around to those guys mm-hmm. and working all that with the draws and all that together. It Absolutely. was uh, it, it definitely can, can uh, result in something good this mm-hmm. next week. So we're well, looking and, forward to, to this Howard game. Yeah, and what you see is, uh, is a glimmer of light. You know, and sometimes all it takes is a little glimmer of light for you to say, okay, I remember who we are. You know, this is, again, this is the same team that went and scored, uh, uh, you know, 42 against Knox Carter, who beat South Doyle, who was a state-ranked team. Um, they're 6-3 and three now. This is the same team that went and scored, you know, 40-something on, on Udawa. Um, this is a good football team, and, and I think we've lost some confidence. But I think Friday night in the first half, you saw a glimmer of light, and that glimmer of light can really turn into to something great. And, and we're going to press that this week. You know, I, I talked to our guys today, and they still have uh, this, you know, the same hope that we've had all year. Uh, and I think that that little glimmer may turn into a really bright shine uh, here in the next couple of weeks. I hope. And with that, we're going to take a commercial break. We'll be right back with you guys here on the Walker Valley Football Coaches Show, and we will be discussing this week's game against Howard. Welcome back to the Walker Valley Football Coaches Show, sponsored all season long by Wholesale Supply Group. Once again, I'm Andy Morris with Jacob Mason, of, and of course, Walker Valley head football coach Drew Akins and Coach Akins. As we said, last region game of the year, last regular season game. Kind of, you can kind of look at this one, and this this is my words, not yours, as a tune-up to get ready for that Carnes game. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm not sure we can treat anything as a tune-up. Uh, you know, we've, we've got to continue to make progress at who we are. And listen, it starts in practice. It starts tomorrow. Um, you know, when we go out for a Tuesday practice, we need to go out and have the, honestly the same practice we had last week, which was a really dominant practice. Like when you talk about, you know, how difficult football practice is, uh, it, it's hard. It's hard to go out there four times and get one reward. You know, it's that's what makes it so different than baseball and basketball. You get multiple games. This one, you you practice way more uh, than you get to play. So, you know, when you when it doesn't work out on a Friday, it kind of gets discouraging. 
uh, but we need to go out and you know have the same exact practice as we had last week, which was great energy, great tempo, great effort, great execution in practice, because the more you do it in practice, the more it becomes natural. Uh, so that's my expectation for this week, that we go practice really hard, uh, and then show up Friday and, and really execute well and, and play with great effort on defense uh, and get back to turning the ball over. You know, I know we had one the other night, but our expectation is two or more. Uh, so we need to get back to our goal board. And what does our goal board say? We need to run the ball efficiently. We haven't done that uh, very much this year. Uh, and that, that's a little bit, you know, I think Friday it was a little bit because I got away from the run. Uh, and I, was, I think we did a really good job offensively of keeping them off balance early. And then in the second half, it became throw, throw, throw. Uh, when we do that, they're able to fall underneath those and take away slants that we, you know, we kind of talked about. We threw slant really well in the first half. What changed at halftime? Well, they fell under slants. Well, why were they able to do that? Well, it's because we stopped running the football. So that's something we, you know, we need to focus on running the football this week. See if we can get back into a, a game where we can gain yardage, you know, four yards a carry. That's the goal. If we gain four yards, it's an efficient run. Uh, we need to be good on third down. We got better on third down. You know, in the first half, we were really good on third down. Uh, in the second half, we didn't do as well. Uh, so we need to focus on our third down execution. Uh, we need to protect the football and protect the quarterback. You know, we had one turnover the other night, but we had three sacks. Uh, and, and our goal there is, that's one goal, protect the football, protect the quarterback. Well, when that's we, we can do one thing. You can have one sack, you can have one turnover. That's the rules. Anything more than one total uh, is, making not, a bad habit. is making a yeah. bad habit. So we need to take those things away, and we need to protect better, and we need to protect them, understand how important the football is. You know, defensively, our goal is to hold them under 24 points. Well, we haven't done that in this four-game stretch, and it's cost us. Yeah. It's cost us um, because, you know, you know, just anytime you give up more than 24, it makes it, especially where our offense is right now, where we're searching a little bit, it's going to make it difficult to win. Uh, third down, again, third down efficiency. We've got to do better on third down of stopping the other team. I think they were four of eight. Our goal is three, or we were, they were four of 10. Our goal is three of 10. So we, we missed that one. Uh, defensively, also a, a goal that we have is to create more than, you know, two or more turnovers. We created one. So you can see you know, those goals, when you don't hit those goals, a lot of times those goals, when you're not focused on the win, you're focused on those goals. The win takes care of itself. You know, we always say if you hit six goals, then the seventh one's going to take care of itself. Well, over this four-game stretch, we haven't hit six goals. We've hit two. We've hit three. We've hit five. Against McMahon, we hit five goals. And we, we ended up losing. Uh, so I, I think if we go in the, with the mindset of, hey, these are our goals, and we don't care who we're playing, these are the goals that we want to accomplish. Uh, we go into this game with that, that in mind, I think you're going to see us make some progress on both sides of the ball. And if we do that, go hit our goals, the win's going to handle itself. Uh, and that's going to be the message we preach this week. So I'm a defensive guy, so I always want to know what we're looking forward to on offense when we see our next opponent. So kind of talk about Howard, what their offensive tendencies are, mm -hmm. and, and what the scheme may kind of be this yeah. week. You know, they got a they got a good little running back. Uh, he's a really quick kid. Uh, they run the ball. They they, they got a, a, a few of their sets uh, where they're like 90% run. Like we can really say, hey, they're going to run the ball here. There's another set where they're 50-50, and we got to know – Hey, what formation are they in? What personnel are they in? Uh, and based on that, we can really feel comfortable of, hey, they're going to run, they're going to pass here. Uh, so that's number one. Uh, they, up front, they do a really good job of moving people. So in the run game, you know, they're really looking to move people off the football. Uh, against Cleveland in the preseason, they drove all the way down the field and just didn't finish the drive. Against Udwa, they moved the ball all the way down the field, just didn't finish drives. And they've got some good uh, size on their offensive line. I'll tell you line. what, they got some really big kids that, that can really move people. Uh, I think where they, they fall short is just taking care of the football. Uh, and any negative play gets them out of rhythm. So we got to do a good job defensively of creating that negative play. Um, you know, being in their backfield, which, like I just said, is what they're trying to keep you from doing. They do a really good job of handling the down linemen and making sure that it at least gets past the line of scrimmage. So we're going to have to do a good job defensively, uh, especially at the defensive line, of holding our ground uh, and giving our linebackers a chance to shoot gaps. So, uh, but they're going to be a run-first team. Uh, they're going to make sure that 
they're they're using their offensive linemen to move people. And then that, that tailback number six is a pretty good little player, and we're going to have to make sure we get him on the ground because if he gets out in, in the open grass, he's really difficult to handle. For sure. So I don't think I've ever asked this before. Uh, you know, you talked about recognizing sets, mm -hmm. right? How, how much film do you guys watch as a team to pr prepare for that? You know, uh, we, we, we meet every day. So every Monday... Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we meet offense for 30 minutes, defense for 30 minutes. So we're getting about two hours per week with our with our offense and defense awesome. of watching film. Uh, but as coaching staff, man, we're watching. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I looked last week. I think I had eight to nine hours of film watched throughout last week, you know, watching Upperman film. I think you saw the same thing from Coach Ashby and Coach Harvey on the defensive side of the ball watching, you know, similar eight to eight to nine hours of film. So... You know, I, I think our defensive staff, Coach Harvey, I, if I say one thing about him, he's a he's a film junkie. Uh, you learn that from Kane. You know, uh, Kane's a film junkie. I think Kane ended up telling us that he watched, you know, 11 to 12 hours of film last week on us. Wow. Uh, it kind of spooked him, <laughs> uh, he told us. So, uh, but but listen, that's how, that's where you gain an understanding of what, what, the, what is the other team trying to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's very important for defensive staff to understand what they're trying to do in order to call a game. You know, offensively, we're just kind of calling a game. You know, we get a feel. You know, I've always kind of gone off feel. Hey, we're running the ball well. And, you know, I go into a game with a plan. You know, we have 10 plays scripted, and we're going to run those 10 plays. Typically, I would say 70 to 80% of the games, we get through our 10-play script before we do anything different, unless, it's, unless we get off schedule. Uh, we stay on script pretty well offensively. But once we get into the game, it's like, okay, here's what their adjustments are. Here's what we're doing well. Let's go. And defensively, it's a little different. It's more as a play caller, you're reacting. You're reacting to personnel groups. You're reacting to formations. You're reacting uh, to where they're, they're trying to attack you. Uh, and, and then you try to put your defense where the players aren't reacting. You as a coach react, but your players attack. Uh, and you can't do that if you don't understand what's coming next. And I think our defensive staff does a great job of, uh, of them knowing what's coming next and them relaying to our players what's coming next, uh, which is cool to watch. Yeah. Well, that's one of those things, as Jacob and I call the games on Sports 99.1, we, we know the amount of time that you guys put in mm -hmm. watching film. We, we joke about it with you off air and stuff. Mm -hmm. But as we watch the games from the press box and see – these offensive tendencies from the other team, it's neat to see how you guys are already kind of anticipating those tendencies as we're figuring them out as we're watching the game live. So you guys definitely do a good job. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. It's, it's a lot of work, uh, but we care about it. And you can see that just by the way we adjust and the way we try things. You know, I think in the second half we tried stuff. Uh, we just didn't execute those things. <clears throat> but you can see that we're trying constantly to come up with, with different ways to move the football, different ways to create stops. Uh, and that, that goes a lot, you know, Monday through Thursday. It's not a lot of Friday work. It's a lot of Monday through Thursday work. So uh, I, I appreciate that. It's definitely something that we work hard at. So last thing I got for you, Coach, Howard, looking at their schedule, they've given up some points this year. Mm -hmm. What is your offensive approach? You're, you're an offensive mind guy. Mm -hmm. What is your approach against a team like this? What are your goals? What are you telling the guys? Yeah, I think we're going to have to continue to get better at what we're doing. Like I said, I think run efficiency is something we've got to focus on this week. We don't necessarily have to run the ball a ton, but when we call runs, we need to work towards that four yards per, per rush. And it's not, you know, that's something that can be really deceiving because you could have 10 rushes for 60 yards. And you're like, man, they ran the ball really well, six yards a carry. But, you, you know, one of those rushes could have been a 42-yard run, which means the other nine went for 18, you know, total. Yeah. Uh, so when we say run efficiency, we're looking at how many runs went over four yards, four yards or more. So what percentage of runs went four yards or more? And we're looking to get 60%. And, you know, over the years that I've been here, we've really kind of honed in on 60% is the number that we try to hit. And if we hit 60%, we feel really good about winning the game. And when you look back over, you know, all the games that we've played here, when we've hit, uh, when we've hit 60% run efficiency, we've won every single one of them, except for one. Uh, when we didn't hit run efficiency, we've lost every sing single one of them, except for two. 
So 60% is the number. Like if we hit 60%, the likelihood of us winning goes up by, I mean, just percentage-wise, exponentially. So we call um, that the Drew Aikens Advanced Analytics. Dude, I'm correct. telling you, that's something that we, we, we have focused on here for a few years now, is we really talk about run efficiency. Yeah. If we can keep the box six-man box because we've ran the ball so well, then we're good enough at receiver, at quarterback, to be able to spread the ball. But if you get that six out out of the box, that's where it becomes difficult because that six hat out of the box means that the throwing lane got smaller. Uh, and if you're not able to take advantage of a five-man box running the ball, it becomes really difficult. Like having to have Aiden Gibson, as Jacob pointed out, he said, look, they're bringing another safety double, over the top yeah. to d double cover. Exactly. And, and, you know, it, it, at that point in the game, it was, late, it was late in the half, and we weren't running the ball at that point. But we did run two on that drive that they did that. We ran two quarterback yeah. draws. Both of them went for 13 yards or more. We went one for 13 and one for 15 on that drive. Um, so two draws went for 30 yards on that. That's that's a big time. That's yeah, big absolutely. time yards. That's three first downs off two runs. Uh, so that's something that we really try to focus in on and uh, try to be good. So we've got to run the ball efficiently, uh, and then we've got to. I think where it's going to be a game where we've got to hit windows uh, passing the ball, and we need to be really, uh, you know, something that we've really got to do better at uh, from the offensive line. It's really everybody. Uh, is our, our completion percentage has re been really bad over the last few weeks, and it's not just a quarterback thing. You know, we've had drops, we've had protection issues. Uh, you know, there's all these things that go into a completed yeah. pass. One completed pass, so many things goes into that. It could, you know, from protection to ball to route. Defensive to, coverage. Yeah, yeah, to catch. Yeah. I mean, so many things go into it. We've got to do a better job of, of our completion percentage getting back over 70 uh, because, you know, against – Carter against Ottawa against Notre Dame uh, were over 70% passing, and that led to wins. Uh, so we've got to get back into that that realm of hey, let's let's get our completion percentage back up, and I think you'll see yardage go up, touchdowns go up, scoring go up. So those two things are two things that I want to make sure we're focused on: uh, run efficiency and completion percentage. For sure, and and you're going to be tested this week on the offensive line with, from what I've heard, yeah. two two very special defensive linemen yeah, they at, got, at Howard. Yeah, they got two defensive tackles that are really good players. Uh, that, that have high energy, high motors. They don't necessarily play with great technique, uh, but they play really hard. And it's something we're going to have to make sure we uh, really focus in our protection, especially with those two guys, uh, and that we, we give Ryan time uh, to be able to throw the ball. And then once we get into those open spaces, I look forward to seeing our receivers make plays in open space. For sure. So, Coach Howard. 7.30? 7.30. At Howard. Eastern time zone this week, Eastern guys. Time Eastern time, time zone. And it's a 30-minute drive opposed to a three-hour drive, so that's exciting for us. That's too. right. So if you guys are looking at max preps, ignore it. The game is not at Walker Valley. It is in Chattanooga at Howard, 7.30 kickoff. And, of course, this is, the, as we said, the last game of the season, of the regular season, uh, last region game, of course. And it's, it, in my opinion, a, a good game to get some positivity rolling going into Carnes to go upset them first round of the playoffs. So, Coach, we're excited, looking forward to it this Friday. Uh, Jacob and I will be on the call on Sports 99.1. Pre-game show will start at 6.30, and kickoff again will be at 7.30. We look forward to you guys joining us, and we're excited. Mm -hmm. One Valley.